Hi, welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make the black for this Lacy Trees quilt that I just designed this last week. I don't have this quilt quilted yet, it is just pieced, but I really had fun making it, and I can't wait to show you how to put it together. Before we get started, I, you will want to review the video that I shared last week on how to make Christmas tree quilts using any triangle templates that you might have. Uh, I showed you how to make uh, this Christmas tree placemat. Uh, it's the Santa tree. And what you'll want to learn is how to not only uh, use the triangle templates, but also how to create the end units. That is very important to square up your block or your rows. You need to have that end unit. I will be using the Missouri Star a wedge and wing set, so I autom automatically have that end unit. But you can actually construct those using any uh, typical template that you might have in your sewing studio. So make sure you review that video. I'll have it linked below. Uh, make sure you go ahead and watch that and make sure that you're familiar with how to uh, cut the triangles as well as the end pieces. So the quilt behind me is one that I designed in my EQ8 software. I love using my EQ8 software. I design tons of quilts in there. I have way too many quilts designed that I'll ever be able to put together, but this one just came to my mind and I thought I'd love to have something that I can use over the winter that's not just a Christmas quilt, but something I can use even in January. So I went to my stash and I pulled blues and greens from my strips, um, my strip stash, as well as lace. I had all this leftover lace from my American Sewing Conference that I had been at, and so I grabbed that as well. And I also grabbed my uh, catalog, my um, U-line, old, outdated catalog, and it's the foundation paper that I'm using to create these great blocks. Very simple, lots of fun to do as well, and you really get your creative juices flowing. So let's see how this is done. All right, so here are most of my supplies that you'll see. And uh, first of all, I did go to my strip stash and I grabbed lots of blues um, in every color imaginable of blue. It's, it's not that I was trying to be matchy-matchy. I just wanted a lot of variety of blues. I did trim some of the width down on some of these. I didn't want the width to be any wider than two inches for the strips. So uh, some of them are maybe three quarters of an inch, some are an inch, some are an inch and a half, and some go up as high as two inches. So those are my strips that I'm going to use. Uh, this is some of the lace. I did use white lace on the blue strips, and I used cream lace, which I have here. I used this on the green uh, trees that I created. And then this, these are some of my brown strips. I used that with a square paper for the trunks of the trees. And then this is my uh, catalog. The catalog is a large U-line catalog. It's the old, outdated one. Um, it's over 10 inches tall and eight and a half inches wide, so it was quite large. I just basically ripped some pages out of it, and then I took the page to my cutting mat, grabbed my triangle, and this was the triangle that I'm using. It's the uh, Missouri Star large wedge. And I simply put it on those papers and I literally cut out, I think I've got three or four of them here. I think I cut five at a time as I was working with this. So these are my foundation paper pieces that I will use with these strips to create my trees. I also cut out some two and a half inch uh, squares of the paper and I'm gonna use the brown to create the trunks. And then of course, I also needed my um, background fabric for the end pieces. And so as I taught last week, you need to measure the height of the template and then cut your strip of fabric, whether it's from fat quarters or yardage, cut it in that width. And then go ahead and um, for these end pieces, just make sure your fabric is double. It can be um, wrong sides together or right sides together, it doesn't matter, as long as it's double. And then when you cut that from uh, a double folded or a double um, fabric, you're going to get both the right side and the left side end unit. And you need both to be able to square up your block or square up the ends of rows. And that's a very simple way of accomplishing that. And you can just simply keep flipping your um, template across that strip of fabric until you have as many end units as you need for blocks. Now, for my quilt that I've uh, done, I have 20 blocks that I'm using in this particular quilt. You can make this as large as you want. And, um, and then I'm gonna use some sashing. I'm using a dark blue for the sashing. 
and the fabric of course is this white. I think I have a couple of whites um, because I didn't have enough of the same white. And then of course some light blue that I'm using for um, the swag here. It's kind of a complicated swag um, that I put together. I think that when I put the pattern together and place it out on my website, I'm going to offer a few options for the border and I'll chat with you about that here in just a minute. So I have brought my uh, Christmas tree papers, my foundation paper, and my strips of blue to my sewing machine area here. And what I'm simply going to do is um, start at the bottom of the tree and find a strip that is long enough to cover the entire bottom of it. And I'm going to let it extend over the end a little bit. And then I'm going to just lay it right there. I'm going to cut away the excess. Then I am going to immediately find another strip that I can put right on top of that that will um, be big enough that can flip up and cover the entire foundation paper. So I'm laying it right on top there and I'm going to go ahead and start sewing from here down. Just carefully pick it up, make sure that the paper is all covered, and it is. And I'm going to, um, I've got my machine set at a 2.4 stitch length. And I'm simply going to stitch across here. This is a very simple process, kind of relaxing to just have fun and start playing. And then I'm going to finger press this up. So I have a couple of strips on the tree, and now I'm going to grab something else. Here, what should we grab? Let's grab this. And it's long enough that I can put it there and it will um, cover the paper as I flip it up. Make sure that everything is pressed nicely forward. You don't want to have any creases anywhere. You want to make sure that everything is pressed down. If you're more comfortable in pressing it, you definitely need to use a dry iron, but I just like to finger press. It's quicker for me and I can get it done quicker. And here we go. So there is that. Now let's see, what can we do here? Here's a dark one, let's add this. I'll be adding the lace here separately first thing that I do is uh, cover the tree with strips and then I'll add the lace afterwards and you'll see that here in just a minute. This is a really great way to use up fabric strips that you might have in your stash. So um, I'd recommend it. It's a great way to... And the object can be any object. These happen to be triangle trees, but you could certainly just um, strip piece squares and rectangles, whatever it is. I've been doing a lot of this with um, dryer sheets as well, and I'll be doing a video on that coming up soon. Now I have this triangle here. Um, let's see what I can come up with to finish out the top of that. We'll just use this blue right here. It's wide enough that it will cover. So I'm just going to set it right like that. And I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance as I'm stitching. It doesn't matter as long as you're making sure that you're covering everything. Okay, so there is my tree. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it. So my tree is stitched and you can see it back here. Now what I will do is take it over to the cutting mat with my rotary cutter and trim away all of the excess from the back. I'll lay my template on there and trim that away. Before I do that though, let's go ahead and piece or do the strip piecing for the trunk itself while I'm at the machine. So for this little two and a half inch square, I don't need much in regards to the strips and the strips do need to be rather uh, uh, narrow. So I have three brown strips here. I'm gonna do the same as I did with the tree, I'm starting at the bottom, making sure that I've covered the entire strip. Then I'm going to take my next piece, lay it on top, and I am going to stitch across there. 
So let me do that. I think these three pieces should be plenty to cover the, the square. And so I've got two of them done. Now I'm going to lay this here and sew across that. Nope, I need a little bit more. So I'm going to grab one more just to make sure that we cover everything. I want to make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Don't want any folds in it. Oops, I got stuck there. Okay, I'm going to finger press that open. So there is my square. I'm going to take these both over to the mat and get those trimmed up so that they're even with the foundation paper. And then I'm going to show you how I put the lace on there. Well, I hit a wrong button while I was videoing that. Um, but basically what I did was I took my uh, triangle template and placed it on the back where the paper was and cut around it and got rid of all of the excess and then removed the paper. So there it is. And for the trunk, I simply took uh, my uh, ruler and squared it up to the two and a half inch uh, template on the back, got rid of the paper. And now we have our trunk and our tree. Now we have to do the um, rectangles and also the sides of this tree. So let's get that done. So here are the components to the tree. I've got my tree here, the two uh, end units that will square off the block, and then my trunk. Now for my size block, I needed to have three inch by two and a half inch um, side pieces to finish off the bottom. And that will d vary depending on the size triangle that you use. You'll just have to investigate that, what you'll need. I am going to take this lace here. I think I'm going to add it uh, about right there. What I like to do is just uh, cut off a piece. I kind of audition it and I'll take it over to my machine there. Now with this lace, um, it's a motif that I can actually cut out. And um, you can do what you want. You can add the whole thing. You can play around. I have been playing with mine and cutting out the motifs. And let me get my scissors and uh, do some of that so you can see how I accomplished that. So I left my scissors at my sewing machine, so I have it now. I think what I'm going to do is place the um, lace about right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim this away. And then I'm going to get rid of this bottom section here. And I'm not real, um, you know, fussy about it. I'm just trying to get some of that excess lace cut away so the motif is left. There we go. And just kind of have fun placing it. Maybe bring it down here. What, whatever uh, suits your fancy. Just have fun with it. Experiment, play. Now what I'm going to do is take it over to the machine and I'm going to literally sew up each edge and then across and down the edge. And then I will come across here and just make sure it's all uh, sewn down. And the same up here. I'll come up the side, go across, down, and I might just come straight across right at this point and these will be left loose. And that will just secure the lace on there and then I will trim it away and then we can put this all together. So let's take all of this to the sewing machine and get it put together. So here is the tree and all of its components and I'm gonna be putting it together, but first I'm going to secure the lace onto the tree. So let me move this camera so that you can see as I'm stitching. All right, I'm gonna start with this top one here and I'm simply going to stitch up the edge across, down the edge, and then I'm going to simply stitch across the, in the straight line there, which will let the bottom of that be loose. So that is now secure. Now we're going to stitch this one on here. And I 
kind of like having that about right there. So that's where I'm going to place it. And start down here, come up the very edge. I'm stitching about an eighth of an inch from the um, edge there so that that line of stitching will be within the seam allowance when the block is sewn together. And to come around here, I might just go. So it is now sewn very easily and I'm just going to trim away the excess lace. We don't need that in our seam allowances. And we are going to uh, get started on sewing the block together now. So the first thing I'm going to do to sew this block together is to sew the sides with the tree trunk. So let me quick do that. So there's one finger press it and then we need to add this one to the other side. going to finger press that. All right, so it is ready. Now we are going to sew uh, the sides or the wings to the tree and I'm simply going to put them right sides together. And when I sew my trees, my triangles, I really like to start in the middle of the tree instead of starting at either end because it's kind of hard to start sewing when you're at a point. And you'll want to notice um, and maintain those little dog ears. That's really important. I'm trying to get this even and I'm going to show you. So here is a dog ear that you need um, as you're starting on the one end. And then on the other end, there is another dog ear that you can see right there. Those are important that you have those. And I'm just going to line it up. You can certainly pin. I just don't pin. I'm literally starting in the center of the tree and I'm going to stitch out toward the points. It just is so much easier for me than fighting uh, trying to start at a point. And then I'm going to flip it over, come back to the middle, and sew the tree. Okay, so I'm going to finger press it open for you, and there we have it. So that one is done. Now I'm going to take this side and do the same. Flip it over, find the center point, make sure I've got these, these little dog ears, that's important, and then I'm going to start in the center of that tree on the seam allowance there. Sew down to one point, and then flip it over, begin back in the center, and sew to the other point. So there we go. And you'll notice that we have to have our quarter inch seam allowance up at the top. That's very important. You've got to have that so that when you connect this block to a sashing or another block, you've got the seam uh, allowance available there. So I'm going to go press this open and then I'm going to uh, sew these together. I'm going to sew the trunk portion to the tree itself. But let me get this pressed properly and I'll be right back. So I've just pressed the tree and the trunk portion. Now I'm going to flip this trunk portion up and get it sewn onto the bottom of the tree there. So let me make sure it's even here across the bottom. There we go. I should have started my leader in there and I didn't. There we go. In some areas, my machine is going through quite a few pieces of fabric with um, a lot of those different strips, so it sounds quite loud. And then I'm going to press it toward the tree. And there is the block, such a simple little block. 
So here is my completed black and um, because I've used uh, these large templates, my black with a two and a half inch um, uh, trunk area down here measures uh, ten and a half inches long and seven and a half inches wide. Depending on the template that you use, your tree might be a different size. And uh, that's fine. Just play with it and de decide you know, what size trunk you want to use. And um, that will determine the length here as well as the height of your trunk uh, for the tree. And then uh, for your sashings, you could simply just be cutting the sashings based on the length of your tree. I found this beautiful batik in my um, stash and it looks like it's got some frosty uh, snow on it. It's just a beautiful uh, fabric and so I'm using it for my sashing and I'm using this batik for the cornerstones as well as the outside border. And then for the uh, outside or the, the middle border, I am using a swag. And here is the one that I used for the quilt behind me. And it's a more complex swag in that there are two units to it. I did use a fusible interfacing to apply it and just a simple straight stitch around the edge for this. Um, my question to you is what um, you might be interested in for the border here. I've got a couple of options for the border. Um, I could do a simple uh, swag, with it, which is just one piece, or a, a point, pointed swag, or uh, border, I should say. So I'm just wondering, let me know what uh, you're interested in, if you'd like me to include in the pattern the complex swag, the simple swag, or the point. Um, I'm interested to hear what, your, uh, what you'd like to use for this quilt. I'm so glad that you stopped back today to hear about my lacy tree blocks, and I hope that you'll all be creating them. I'd love to see pictures of them. Let me know how you're going to be using this block. And I really do want to hear from my viewers on how you'd like me to write that pattern, the lacy tree pattern, and get it on my website. Shall I go with the complex border that you see here? Shall I go with the simple swag border? Or shall I go with a pointed border? Let me know your feelings on that. I'd like to be able to uh, give you what you're looking for. And uh, I really appreciate your stopping back today. Thank you so much for watching my channel. If you do like what you see on my channel, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe that really does help my channel get out to more quilters and I do appreciate that and I love to hear from my viewers so next up on Monday I have my block number 14 which will be my scrappy block of my 52 week series so make sure you check back for that I will have my holiday snowman runner that I'm going to be demoing and I'll be doing that in a few days so stop back for that and also I'm working on that uh, kimono jacket I'm still working on that and I can't wait to show you the next step on that so make sure you uh, subscribe so that, or, and make sure you hit the notification button so that you get notified of all the uh, YouTubes that I'll be putting out on online. So thank you so much. Have a great week. Happy quilting and we'll see you next week.